You know, originally the plan for this tutorial was I was gonna start off with a cutesy little story intro where we're chilling by the lake and then a cube erupts out of the water and I was gonna tell like a little story about Abraham. I, I don't know how any of these like little pieces connect, uh, but I tried recording this like 60 times and I'm just gonna give up, okay? Uh, this is a tutorial about how to make like stuff erupt or I guess glide around the uh, pond surface. I don't have a good explanation for it. I tried many times, but whatever. Uh, this is not a fluid simulation tutorial, even though it seems like it. I were not going to be simulating the entire surface of a lake or a pond because the hard drive space alone would be a massive fucking issue, okay? Uh, we're going to be using uh, cheats and a lot of visual cheats as well, like dynamic paint, like horizon lines to create the scene. You can see it's it's all bullshit, right? It's, it's an HDRI with a plane. Uh, but I'm not only going to show you how to do this uh, kind of simulation stuff where we get the waves, but how to also uh, create this scene because I think that's also uh, valuable as well. So uh, join me in having a cube come out of the water, I guess. I don't know. So uh, let's start off a new scene. I'm using Blender version 2.92. It doesn't matter. Use a version of Blender. It can be 7. It can be 11. I don't care. <laughs> okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with the simulating part of it. And uh, to do that, uh, we're going to create the water surface. Okay, so that's what this point is okay how is it that we simulate uh, ripples and whatever interactions uh, with the cube on this plane without doing any kind of fluid simulation that's the uh, million dollar question well the answer is uh, dynamic paint uh, this thing right here dynamic paint uh, the way it works is it uses kind of like a real-time vis physics engine or something that we can interact uh, the cube while we're playing but point is uh, we need geometry to do this okay so go into edit mode we are going to subdivide this a bunch of times because uh, you can kind of think of this as an image resolution the more we uh, subdivide it, uh, the more kind of spatial, geometrical, three-dimensional resolution we have uh, for this kind of thing, okay? Uh, so subdivide it a bunch. If you don't do this, it's not going to work. We're going to make this a dynamic paint canvas. In other words, this is what is going to be affected. That's what a canvas means. And then the other object being the cube or whatever you want to interact. It could be a couple objects, actually. Uh, you make this a dynamic paint, not a canvas, but a, say with me, a bush? No, brush. <laughs> you make it a brush, okay? Uh, so the brush is what affects uh, the canvas. And, and if we play this right now, nothing's going to happen, right? Uh, because we haven't really defined the kind of interaction. So uh, with our canvas, we want to say this isn't painting. We don't want it to like, you know, do some stuff for the shader editor where some of it's blue or whatever. No, uh, we want to wave interaction. And automatically, you can see now the brush is affecting this in real time. Um, and the nice thing about this is you don't need to think about it too much. We just kind of play this, animate it, then we can cache it if we want to, and that's the end of the story. Um, only thing we need to do for this is a couple of settings to make it not look like garbage, because, you know, this looks hella intense, especially if we're dipping in and out, right? Uh, first thing we can do for this uh, is let's kind of make a, a lot of chaos. Uh, you can see it's looking really faceted, okay? In other words, it's looking very flat shaded. So I'm just going to make this shade smooth, which is already going to help. Another thing is maybe one more level of subdivision, although uh, the more you do this, uh, the longer it will take to simulate. Um, another thing we can do is for this uh, cube uh, stuff, we can actually uh, affect a lot of properties for this simulation, if you want to call it that. I guess it is simulating, right? Um, we can take the factor and bring it down. The factor is, you know, the, the tooltip says multiplies for wave influence, blah, blah, blah. It means how much uh, does this affect waves? If it's a small number, it's going to make very tiny ripples, uh, which is what we want because it's uh, disturbing a lot. If it's a big number, the opposite, okay? Uh, so now if we restart, you can see even if, whoops, uh, even if we dip this in chaotically, it's not going to be super intense, uh, which is a good thing because um, especially since we don't want to simulate an entire lake surface, we're just going to simulate this tiny patch um, and then kind of render water around it. So we can't have like crazy interactions happening in here where there will be discontinuities, okay? Uh, cool. So now let's kind of set up a basic animation. So uh, with the camera, I'm going to make this 15 millimeter focal length. Uh, why 15? Well, you know, it's three times five. That's one, <laughs> one thing it has going for it. It's also two times seven plus one, uh, if you didn't know. Um, I'm just going to set up the camera so it's kind of looking off into the horizon. We'll deal with the HDRI stuff uh, later. Uh, but for now, we just want to make a basic animation. I'm going to have it be 150 frames. I'm also going to have it be 30 frames per second. Why? Uh, because it's 3 times 10. <laughs> um, and for the animation here, we could do, you know, keyframe and then move it keyframe. Uh, but instead, uh, here's something that's faster and will honestly look better. Enable auto keyframe. When you click play now, uh, we just kind of move this. So it's kind of like this is performance capture. Um, so I'm doing my best. And now you can see it's just going to replay whatever we did. And the dynamic paint works automatically. We can cache it so it doesn't need to actually do this calculation every time. Uh, but for now, this is a good start. Okay. 
so now the question is, how do we kind of make this a scenario, or a scenario I mean scene, we'll call this the scenario scene, whatever. How do we do it? Um, well, first of all, I'm going to switch over to Cycles GPU just because I think it renders nicely. Um, what I'm about to do, you can totally also do an EV, by the way. Uh, this is just how I'm going to do it, okay? Uh, so with uh, Cycles, what are we going to do? Well, first of all, we need a, a background. So I'm going to choose a HDRI, so environment uh, texture uh, for the environment. Uh, for this, I downloaded an HDRI, bunch of spoilers for the next CG Matter tutorial. Um, you can see I just kind of loaded in this random HDRI where there was stuff under it, and it, it doesn't matter. We'll, we'll make it work, don't worry. Uh, for this HDRI, we want uh, this water to reflect uh, that surface. How do we do it? Well, we go to shading, and by the way, uh, one thing to make this less distracting, viewport display. There we go. Uh, this way, we don't see any anything around it. Uh, how do we make it look like water? That was the point. Well, uh, what we can do, rendered mode. And again, this is also going to work for Eevee. Uh, we want to make a water material. So this is just going to be for the uh, plane. Uh, do I know how to spell anything? <laughs> uh, whenever we change it, it's going to affect the plane, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to make it transmissive. This means it's see-through. Um, but right now it's kind of like stained glass uh, because of the roughness. Uh, you bring down the roughness and now we can kind of see through it, okay? Um, and it just so happens that now uh, the interactions, the waves, they kind of look pretty good. Uh, generally, this will also look work with a look dev, if not look more realistic. Uh, that's up to you. Uh, but this is just kind of like a start, and we're going to make it look better. Um, okay, so we have this kind of pond in the... You know, it, why is it just on land, right, is the point. Um, to fix this, what I'm going to do is, again, we do not want to simulate the entire thing. So what I'm going to do is just do a basic set extension. Uh, you make a plane. You make it very big, um, just so it kind of goes off to the horizon. And uh, for this one, I'm just going to do some edit mode trickery. So uh, control R, loop cut here, also loop cut up top. If I can do it, control R, boom. I'm going to take all these edges and then uh, bevel them out just so they're slightly smaller uh, than our, like, uh, well, we'll call it our simulation area. I'm just going to take the uh, middle face and delete it. Uh, so now if we kind of hide this dynamic paint surface, we just have a plane with a hole cut through it. At least we should, if I can uh, hide everything properly. Yes. Yeah, so now it's only the HDRI showing through here. Um, and uh, for this, I think we just give it a water material, and that should help with the blending uh, quite a bit. Um, some things to make it look a bit better, because right now it's kind of looking trash. Uh, we want to take this and kind of dip it a tiny bit below the surface of the water, just so it's not like crazy... Uh, the discontinu discontinuity um, isn't crazy. So just dip it a tiny bit below. We can also do a couple other tricks uh, to make it uh, so that it works. Uh, by the way, the reason that uh, we can kind of see the seam here uh, between the uh, dynamic paint uh, area and the rest of it is, again, because this has a wave. So even the very edges are slightly distorted. Uh, I mean, we could fix it with the simulation. I think just one thing I'm going to do uh, without putting in too much work, I'm just going to take the factor, again, the strength of it, and just dip it a tiny bit more. This way it has a tiny bit less influence, and then the waves won't be as strong. Uh, but in general, if you have, like, two layers of anything, it's going to look weird. Um, you can do your best to line it up. I'm just going to make it a tiny bit higher. Okay, a uh, good start. Um, how else can we blend it in? Well, uh, if we make everything darker, it's going to be a little harder to see what's going on. And also if we change the view angle, let's do that first. So view, camera view, and this is also going to fix this horizon issue. You just kind of want to, <laughs> you don't want to go too far, but you want to place the camera just so that the horizon kind of clips these trees uh, just like that. And that's going to make it a steeper angle. So it's going to be harder to see the uh, transition line. Um, okay, what was I saying? Uh, you can make the water darker, and it will also look more like water. So you make a tiny bit blue or green or whatever kind of water. We're also going to darken it a bit, and this is what's going to make it really look like the water surface. Uh, by the way, if, uh, you know, you had the water like this, and you're like, oh, I want it to be darker, and you happened uh, to increase metallic, uh, the, that will also kind of do it, but it will also introduce a lot of weirdness to it. Uh, if this is what you want, perfect. Um, although I do kind of want to see through it a tiny bit because I think that's valuable. Uh, maybe there is something to, um, you know, I'm just going to darken it, but maybe there is something to making a tiny bit metallic. Uh, technically, in terms of materials, this is 100% <clears throat> incorrect. <laughs> uh, but, you know, whatever looks good, right? It's, nobody's coming into the scene and being like, oh, the physics is wrong. We, you need to redo it. Yeah, no, no, nobody's. Well, maybe somebody's doing that. Maybe if you work for somebody. Um, other things, a uh, water, it has an IOR, index of refraction, of 1.333. That's just a fact. You can look it up. It's how much light bends around it. Uh, 1.45, the default value, is, is better for glass and stuff like that. 
Um, other stuff, uh, what, what are we talking about? The waves, they kind of look choppy. Um, again, you can either up the uh, resolution here or another trick, and this is kind of a weird one. Uh, because the, uh, <clears throat> God, uh, because of the dynamic paint, which is, again is being simulated, uh, we can kind of think of it as a modifier. We can put a modifier after it, something like smooth or maybe even a subsurf. Uh, this is going to add extra geometry and make it look hella smooth, uh, but also make it hella laggy. Uh, let's see if it can play in real time. Almost. Almost. Um, but not quite. Uh, but the point is, if you have time to cache it and all this, this is fine. So I'm going to add in a uh, subsurf. Uh, for the cube, I'm going to make it a glowing cube because that's kind of what I promised. So whatever. Uh, we'll deliver a mission. You make it a red or whatever color and you make the strength crazy, like 50 or maybe even 500. No, 500 is definitely too much. Maybe 100. Um, this is what's going to give it that nice uh, glowing and it works with the reflection and everything because it cycles. Um, what else can we do here? I want to... Oh, I don't know what I ate yesterday, but it is wreaking havoc. I went over to the Dollar Tree. Why the Dollar Tree? Uh, because all the the snacks there are a dollar. <laughs> That's why. And I picked up all these marshmallows and teddy bears, and I, I ravaged this weekend. It was crazy. But now I'm starting to feel the, you know, the not not the side effects, but the consequences, right? You got to live with your actions. I guess it's better than a hangover or something like that. Uh, what are we talking about? Uh, we have renders and stuff like that. Okay, yeah, looks good, looks good. Um, final things is we've done the simulating, we've done the thing. Uh, how do we hide the horizon line? That's kind of an important point because you can see uh, we've kind of done this cam camera trickery that it almost looks like this is the water of a pond or something and the trees are reflecting, even though we know it's just kind of like a train track, right? Uh, we need to hide it because it's a bit sharp. Uh, to do that, we're just going to blur it out. How are we going to blur it out? With, with depth of field, of course, right? Um, enable depth of field. We're going to focus on the cube, and we're going to have a f-stop of a low number. I guess very low because our scene scale is kind of fucked, right? So something like 0.2. Yeah, this is where it starts blurring. And you're, you're going to see that kind of hides the edge a tiny bit. Uh, you can even do a bit of modeling in the distance, and uh, that's going to work, but whatever. Uh, do whatever works. Um, another thing, the camera doesn't seem to be moving with the cube. Uh, that's not cool. Uh, we wanted to kind of follow it because that's uh, what happened in the original render. Here's how I did it. I just enabled damp track uh, to the cube. So now it's going to be following the cube on Z minus. This is usually the, usually when you're like, oh, which one do I click? Almost always Z minus pro, pro tip. Um, although now it's going to center the cube, which is a bit much. So I'm just going to set down the influence again. Uh, what this means is now we're going to be following the cube, but only with like, you know, 25% oomph, kind of like the cameraman's like, yeah, I'll kind of try, but I, don't, I really don't give a shit either. Um, so it's going to be following it, but not too much. And that's going to give it a more natural uh, look. Um, what else? What else? Uh, compositing? Maybe. I mean, really, at this point, we've talked about the simulating and stuff like that. I guess I should mention how you should uh, would cache it, right? Uh, so once you're happy with your dynamic paint stuff and you don't want to calculate it on the fly, because if you skip to a random frame, uh, dynamic paint's not going to be working. You need all the frames leading up to it because you need to know the waves that existed before uh, so you can do superposition and all that, right? Uh, to cache it, you just go to cache. Um, you, you, know, you name your cache, and then uh, you cache it. Um, I think uh, by default it's set to 250 frames, which is a bit much, but whatever. Um, I mean, it won't take that long. I can tell you a bit of a story about, uh, I don't know, <laughs> I wasn't really prepared for this scenario. I'll tell, I'll tell you the story about me trying to record this tutorial. So I think I mentioned, or maybe not, because it's a uh, blur at this point. Um, I legitimately did 60-something takes of this tutorial. I, I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> uh, and I, I keep telling to myself, you know what, no, nobody cares. Just just talk. Just fucking t teach the information. You're, you're a natural-born talent anyways. You, you just talk. Uh, but I, I get so fixed on the... Well, uh, it's over. <laughs> there we go. I hope you enjoyed the story. So now everything's uh, cached, which means if we hop to any uh, random frame, uh, waves are already going to be there in the correct spot. Okay? Maybe we'll finish that story later. Uh, but now that you have this cache, you can see there's this uh, purple line down here. It looks sick. How do we make it? the render look sick? Well, a couple things. In gamma, you want to make it you know, a number that makes it look better. I like a bit of intensity. You can also mess with the exposure and then also enable motion blur. Why not? Okay, so let's see what a render looks like of, uh, I guess this frame doesn't really matter. Um, ideally, you would render all this as a video. Yeah, that motion blur is really selling it. It's kind of like we have, we have a camera above the water and it's tracking it. Um, for compositing, I didn't do too much. I think I just added a glare. Uh, because I think I wanted the, to really emphasize that glow for some reason. Uh, to do this, I just enabled glare. I did the image to the glare, which, you know, lets us see the glare. 
fog glow mixed to one. This makes it so we only see the uh, glow and then we can composite it later um, is the idea. Um, and then to kind of just incorporate it, you mix. How do you mix? You mix with um, addition. So make sure this is set to add, because uh, you always want to add in light effects. That's just like the way it's linear, right? Is, is the point. Uh, maybe mess around with the size. Maybe maybe I was wrong about the size of it, or maybe not. Uh, the reason I do it this way, by the way, is again, we isolate the glow. And then when we mix it back, uh, now we have a nice little slider that lets us control it. And I know, yeah, technically you could do this directly from here, but whatever. Um, so I added in a bit of glare, and then I always you know, add in my uh, trademarked uh, lens distortion at the end. Just, just a tiny bit, so everything kind of curves and is chromatically aberrated uh, together, right? Um, I think in some sense that was the kind of the whole composition. There might have been one or two other details, but uh, what are the takeaways? What did we learn? We learned that, uh, you know, if you have an HDRI and you make something kind of look like it's going to the horizon, you can blend it in. And especially if it's reflective, the trees are reflecting down here, it looks real. I mean, if you wanted it to look even better, by the way, uh, we'd want to scale this to go closer to infinity. You know, do what you can do. Or actually, let me use that control selection. No, I want to. I want it to go along the path that I want Blender. Uh, you take this and you scale it up like five times. That'll make it just a tiny bit more accurate, so the reflections line up a bit more. Uh, don't worry about it. And also the view distance. I guess you need to uh, up. I am getting lost in the weeds here, but whatever. Uh, this will just make it so the reflections are um, in the right place. Because if you see before, it's going to be kind of subtle. Uh, you can see the reflections are not, uh, you know, they're a bit shifted, and that's because it's rendering 100 meters into the plane, and then it just kind of gives up. Uh, you want it to go further, and that's going to make our depth of field better, too. Uh, what's the point? Uh, we learned about how to tie the HDRI horizon trick uh, with depth of field. Uh, we learned dynamic paint. Not really. <laughs> I just told you to enable waves, and now you know how to do it. Uh, basic scene composition, stuff like that, and uh, yeah, that's a tutorial. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Patreon always exists. Why do I mention it? Well, you can get this uh, completed one file, the one I used uh, for the render. I'm going to clean it up and stuff. Uh, you can download it uh, from Patreon and all other blends I've ever created dude they're all fucking there uh and you just need to be a patron once and you can download whatever you want um also exclusive tutorials at uh, different tiers that i do not post to uh, either uh, channel cg matter or default cube uh, those guys are getting tutorials you guys are not that's just plain and simple uh behind the scenes access discord stuff like this head over to patreon if you're interested in any of this or uh if you just want to support or fund these tutorials that's a you know another motivation uh, <laughs> uh to do it but i want to say thank you to all 600 some 600 and five last I checked uh, patrons uh, because the, you know the, why not put them in the credits it makes sense they're producing it so whatever um, I appreciate it uh, I hope uh, you enjoyed this free tutorial patrons that are watching thank you people that are not patrons maybe join I don't know <laughs> it's up to you entirely up to you anyways I hope you enjoyed this free tutorial I hope you learned a lot I know this one was a bit of a ramble a scramble and a fucking uh, a mess honestly but you know what I'm feeling crazed and uh, that, that, that's true to how I'm feeling the outcome of this tutorial. But I think, you know, it's not like you didn't learn it. It might have just been a little lost in the weeds. Okay, I need to, I need to finish this. By the way, uh, pro tip, uh, go back and watch Pinocchio. Um, it's, the animation's pretty sick. Okay, that's all I have to say. Bye. <laughs>